Thank you. I'm Dean, I'm a researcher at Status, and I'm gonna quickly introduce a project that I work on on the side with a bunch of other people called Ultralight Beam. Um, this is the outline, I don't think this is accurate anymore because I like deleted slides in my Uber, but we'll see. Um, so quickly as, there we go. quickly as to what or who is working on Ultralight Beam, it's a project by me and then three guys at Chainsafe called Eric, Kamen, and Greg. Uh, we started working on it as a project at S New York and have been like working on it since then on the side, so it hasn't been getting as much love as it's supposed to get, but we'll be working on it again like a pickup speed pretty soon. So firstly, what is Ultralight Beam? Ultralight Beam is a transport agnostic man net for sending arbitrary data. Um, a man net is a mobile ad hoc network, which you can think of a bit as a mesh net, but nodes aren't there persistently. So a man net is a network where topology changes like quite a lot. So for example, if all our phones in this room started connecting with each other and like nodes keep uh, going offline and coming back and the topology has to reorganize every or in short bursts of time, that would be considered a man net. Yeah, so here's a more formal definition. Mannet refers to a continuously self-configuring infrastructureless network of mobile devices connected wirelessly. Um, not only mobile devices, there can be like bigger things like radios or whatever, but that's just like the rough definition. So where do things like mannets become useful? Um, in areas like during protests when an adversary turns off cell towers, it's super useful because I can text someone who's in some accessible range by hopping through multiple phones up until a message reaches the specific peer it's supposed to reach. Um, or like at a festival or at a concert when there's like 40,000 people trying to connect to one cell tower. Everyone knows how that is. The network is off. Or if you're in some obscure location, which has happened probably at a ton of Ethereum meetups already where there's like a ton of people and you're trying to message someone and it is impossible or you don't have 3G or whatever. Another place is like, for example, a school building. Um, students love texting, but what's the point of it hitting a cell tower if the person I'm texting is sitting right next to me? There's no point in wasting data on that when I can just connect to them directly and send messages uh, peer to peer. Or in remote villages in the middle of nowhere where there is no cell connection but there's electronic devices it can be used. Uh, there's another interesting research facet there which is um, called van nets or vehicle ad hoc networks or in delay tolerant networks which are interesting where like if a car goes into these areas it could collect messages and then broadcast it once it hits a cell tower uh, later on which is like email kind of like mail but uh, still electronic. So the goal of this is kind of to be a really simple library that any app can integrate into their application. And the beauty of it is if my app integrates it and your app integrates it, they don't need to know about each other, but we'll relay each other's messages. So for example, if I have WhatsApp and WhatsApp integrates this and someone else uses Telegram and Telegram integrates this, in an ideal world where there's no adversary, what will happen is my message will be uh, propagated by any other node in the network so that the reach is pretty far as long as people are using this protocol. How it works is essentially every phone or every device that runs Ultralight Beam is a node um, that has a series of services and a series of transports. Um, services are things like, for example, WhatsApp would have its own WhatsApp service, or what we've built now is like an Ethereum service, so you can get uh, send Ethereum transactions over this. And then transports are things, for example, like Bluetooth would be a transport, or Wi-Fi Direct, or ham radios, or whatever. And then there's like a delegate where messages are forwarded to if they were not routed successfully through the services. Um, so yeah, the transports we have um, integrated now are Bluetooth, BLE. The next thing we're working on is Wi-Fi Direct, which has been a little bit of an effort because that is only actually supported on Android and it's supported kind of obscurely. And then one of our friends who's like a hobbyist radio dude is also working on a radio transport so we could send messages a lot further. Um, this is just a code example because I took the presentation from um, 
our workshop at DevCon where we were teaching people how to implement their own transports. Um, ideally, or as you can see here, everything is pretty simple. The only thing that a developer is essentially exposed to is a send and a listen function, where send they send some arbitrary message to some address and the listen function just receives messages that have been sent to that specific device. Um, the nice thing is as well, devices can send and listen to uh, multiple transports at the same time. So if I'm peered with someone over Bluetooth and they're peered with someone over Wi-Fi Direct and I'm trying to send it to that person who the middleman is peered with, the message would uh, hop through the central person who understands the transport that I'm using and then forward it to that other transport. Um, yeah, as said, currently we're supporting BLE for short distance communication. Uh, that works for computers and mobile phones. So we've done like examples of multiple Macs and iPhones and Android phones connecting and uh, forwarding and broadcasting messages to each other. Near future is Wi-Fi direct as, as well as like the ham radio stuff that I was talking about. Um, services, as said, are those advertised capabilities of a node and a man net. Um, here we have some examples, which is like an Ethereum RPC uh, chat messaging, or like if there was a generic state channel interface that works over the entire ham radio, so you can send through or send those through the um, network. This is mostly relevant to the relayer, which is a, a special kind of node. Um, so that it knows how to handle UB messages. Relayers are the ones who would then like, for example, if it was an Ethereum transaction, uh, broadcast it to the Ethereum network. Those are like the, usually like a laptop that can receive a lot more messages and is connected to some internet endpoint or whatever. Yeah, as said, uh, the relayer generally lives on the edge of the man net. So it like uh, is within the, um, Mannet and then has access to like internet or whatever so that it can broadcast the messages further. What's interesting with this is uh, multiple mannets could be connected by use having these uh, edges that then send the message over the internet to another edge that then propagates it within their own network. Uh, yeah, so Bluetooth is what we currently support. Wi-Fi Direct is what we're working on next. Um, there's a GitHub ultralight beam. The current implementations that we have are Swift, and there's a Kotlin one in the process. We were also looking at writing a Go one, but the Bluetooth support there is kind of crappy, and every operating system has their own Bluetooth drivers and Bluetooth APIs, so it's suboptimal to do something that's not that device specific um, for Bluetooth. Are there any questions? Uh, maybe a little bit about how the messages would be encrypted in this network. if. Uh, and another one, is there any limitation on like normal Wi-Fi in, in mobile in terms of how how much of a network you can create? Well, so Thanks. the first question was encryption. Yeah. Uh, that's, the messages are just arbitrary binary data. So you can have a handshake before where you agree on a signing key and then encrypt the messages end to end. We are not doing that per default yet. But what we're working on is implementing a lib P2P style handshake so that we can do that. And then um, for the limitation of how many devices, uh, Bluetooth devices or BLE devices can, centrals can connect to eight other devices at a time. And their distance, I think, is something like 80 meters uninterrupted. So that's with Bluetooth. Wi-Fi Direct, uh, I think, has a cap of 16 devices on Android. And the distance there is a lot further. I'm not entirely sure. The main problem which you have is um, the packet size, because BLE, for example, limits the packet size. But what um, the Apple implementation does, which is used by uh, iPhones and Macs, is it already pages those um, messages into multiple pages, so that you have windows, which are then automatically regrouped again on receiving. But I don't think the Android version works the same way, so we also need to bring in compatibility so that pagination works the exact same way. Um, hi. Um, I wonder how do you do the initial um, pairing of two devices via Bluetooth Low Energy, given that Google doesn't allow getting their own Bluetooth Mac address anymore? Um, we don't rely on Mac addresses because those on Bluetooth are invalid anyways. MAC addresses on Bluetooth are generated every time the device is discovered. 
So you need some static peer ID, and then you advertise yourself as, oh, I am this peer. You can find me through this information in Bluetooth, and I'll prove to you that I'm that peer by signing a message beforehand. Uh, so what is the routing like? Because it's that's obviously the interesting. A, a bit of a hard question. Yeah, with this. So with, um, with MANnet routing, there's like three specific algorithms. Um, I forgot like the exact description of all three that we're doing a ton of research on it. So what you can either do is just burst, essentially, which is what we're doing now. We just broadcast to the entire network. Then what some other algorithms do is um, when I receive a message, I check my peers, and they give me, or they always, in short windows, tell me who their peers is. So I always know where it's going to go after the next hop. And you can start like building more accurate algorithms like that. But uh, the routing one is one of the big questions in mannets on how to solve that, yeah. I feel like this <clears throat> kind of thing could have been made like 10 years ago, like we had the technology, we had kind yeah. of the use cases. Any reasons why that hasn't really been a thing that you know of? No, there, so there's been examples. There was FireChat, uh, which was used during the umbrella protests in Hong Kong. And that was shut down because the guy who developed it worked or lives in China. And at one point, uh, there was a knock on his door which told him to stop working on that application. And so he also stopped working on that. And then there's Bridgeify, but Bridgeify is an open source and it only works over Bluetooth. So the goal of this one is to be open source, work on multiple transports and have multiple implementations. So there's already been these like rough experiments, but I think, I think the main problem is the technological challenge, or we've had the stuff for it, but there's always been like certain challenges like with Bluetooth's implementation, uh, Bluetooth was never low energy enough for it to be useful. Uh, Wi-Fi Direct hasn't been stable up until now. You still don't have Wi-Fi Direct support uh, in iOS devices natively. And so like everything or all the things have been there, but to be able to put it all together, that's only like kind of come now. And then of course the routing problem is huge, but there's like a ton of interesting research coming towards that now. And I think there's way more interest in that now because we've seen like after the Arab Spring and things which are happening now, there's more use case for that. Thank you. All right, thank you very much.